in this motherfucker smooth and shit. Hey, man, this is a special one, especially for me, man. For those who don't know, who might not know who this gentleman is sitting next to me. This is uh, Kenny Burns, the lifestyle specialist, man. And, uh, you know, for those who don't know, I'm born and raised in Washington, D.C. If you were 85%, of course, you know that. But this, this gentleman is as well. And when I first was kind of in that transition phase of what I wanted to do with my life, uh, I came upon a documentary that this gentleman put out and uh, it, it motivated me to do what I'm doing now. So I, everybody got their person that they say, you know, they look up to, they idolize and all that. For me, I always say, man, Kenny Burns. And people are like, who is that? Well, now you know who it is. It's dude sitting thank right you, here. Thank you, thank you. Right. Appreciate that. Oh, no problem, my dude. Let, let me hit him with one before you even do it. Oh, let me well. hit him with one. Welcome back to the 85 South Show. <laughs> <laughs> This is the only podcast you can tune in to and see the guests get crab leg juice squirted on them. I'm telling you. <laughs> we got a very special guest in the house tonight, man. Just like my man Chico was saying, DC getting busy on the crab leg. Fucking man. right. And we in this motherfucker, we man. In this motherfucker, Y'all man. from the same hood, we, Chico. We from the same. Ain't nobody allergic in no. I am, but I, I gotta eat them to be allergic. You allergic to what? The crab. God damn it, but I, Chico, man, Only man. if I eat it, you good. It you ain't like peanut butter. It? Yeah, if I smell it, I'm good. If you had a peanut butter sandwich, if you, you smell it, go, you scrape. Yeah, I had to go to right, the car right. that. Damn, man. Yeah, you good. You sure? Yeah, I, I like the fact that you act like me being allergic would make you stop eating them motherfuckers the way you fucking. I'm just them trying up. to make sure now. Nah, you just showed a little concern. Yeah, hey, that's all. <laughs> But yeah, man. Man, uh, let's get to it, bro. Kenny, man, I, I first I just want to start off by saying, man, thank you. You know what I mean? For being a, somebody who gives somebody from where I'm from the motivation to be better. And you're from the streets and, you know, you then did all of that good stuff. But my first question to you is, why Atlanta? Uh, Freak Nick. Shit. Um, <laughs> great answer. <laughs> no, real talk. My cousin, uh, I got locked up my senior year in high school that October. He had went to school. Uh, the following September, and I was on paper, so I couldn't really, you know what I'm saying? So he's telling me, you know, there was no social media, so he couldn't see what was going on. So he's like, man, I'm telling you, this shit is crazy. You gotta see these joints, man, man, yeah. And I'm like, all right, bet, you know I can't go nowhere. I don't wanna hear about this shit. Right. So 92, um, spring, he's like, man, can you can you come down here? Can you check with your PO, see if you can come to Atlanta? They got this shit called Freak, and I'm like, what the fuck is a Freak Nick? He's like, man, I'm telling you, it's like black college heaven. You got to come down there. And I'm like, all right, let me see what I can do. So I got with my PR. I was like, look, I'm trying to go down to, uh, I had to pick a school with Morris Brown because that's the only one that would accept The me. best? Yeah, that's the only one. You know what I'm talking about? Morris Brown, the so best. For them folks, I'm going to go down there because I want to go to school. Can I go visit the school? Blah, blah, blah. I ain't telling him I was going to Freak Nick, but he was like, yeah, nah, go down there, check it out, whatever. You got to be back by this date, da, da, da. I went down there, man. I never in my life, you know, D.C., 10 miles by 10 miles, so you don't really see the world. I mean, I've been blessed to travel. My mother moved around a lot when I was um, young, so I got to see things, but coming down here, I saw people like me from everywhere. You know what I'm talking about? And then back in the day, you know, you had to go, people had to go talk about you. You couldn't just post yourself and talk about what you do, this, that, and the third. So my cousin had been evangelizing that I was this gangster and all this stuff. So when I came out, it was, I knew everybody. Was, yeah, that's your cousin. That's the one you told her. And so long story short, I fell in love with it. And I came back home, did what I had to do, you know, because I wasn't about to go on campus to get an apartment and some jewelry. And I got down that fall, I enrolled in Morris Brown. I was here. Best shit in the world. The best shit in the world. And literally, because of Atlanta, like, and you know, I've been here off and on since 92. So half my life, I've been here. I raised my kids here. So, I'm, you know, this is my home. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because when I came in 92, that's when, you know, Jermaine Dupree sold four million records with Criss Cross. You right. had, yeah. you know, So So Death was starting. You had Rowdy Records starting. You had LaFace Records planted in the soil and, and doing their thing. So it was really the start of the music boom here. Right. Which was um, a blessing in and of itself. And uh, I got in where I fit in immediately. Shit, I was born in 92. How did you get the title, the lifestyle specialist? Like, what goes into that? What does that mean to you? Uh, you know, I didn't really like the sucker shit that went on in the music business. So I, I was always one foot in, one foot out. You know, because I, I used to put my hands on people young. Cause where I'm from, like, you know, that light skin, dark skin thing was a real thing. And we used to rumble. Hey, some, the fuck you looking at? And so growing up, I had to fight a lot. And I just didn't like the sucker shit that would go on in music. You know what I'm saying? And I had the opportunity to realize my skill set in my early 30s, which is marketing and branding. And I just, you know, you know, put one foot in front of the other. I didn't really know that 
my opinion could get me paid. I'm talking right. about like paid. Like, you know, you can get in the door with the good, right conversation. You can impress somebody with the right conversation, but I didn't know you could get paid for an idea. <clears throat> and so I had an opportunity. My friend um, had a $5 million account with Axe Body Spray. And, she, and I didn't know how she got that account because everything I had heard to date, it was these big companies like Gray Advertising, Uniworld, all these companies that got all the business. And she's like, I got this account, but I need your help. I know you know Jay-Z and them. I know you know all these people. Can you help me? I was like, absolutely. And so putting the plays together, I was in these rooms in corporate America. And you can't just say you the partner or you the friend. You know what I'm saying? You got to actually have some type of title. And they kept introducing me. I mean, although I had success in the music business at that point, I had um, – Signed a girl group named Dream, second biggest debut behind the Spice Girls. I had, you know, so done like, helped Jay Z with Reasonable Doubt and Dame Dash and Big and Monica was my first artist. I worked. So I had done things, but I was transitioning because I didn't like the business. And that's when I decided to call myself the lifestyle special. They would call me a lifestyle expert. I ain't, I wasn't old enough. I felt <laughs> and had done enough to be an expert. You know what I'm saying? But I just was like, you know what? I'm definitely able to put the pieces together, and that's how I started. What was your introduction? My bad. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. What was your introduction to the music game? I was you about know, to ask. Yeah, you exactly. skip over all that shit. You yeah. just named all a legendary group of people. Now I tell you, you know, I'm, I'm, I let you explain, but even though I know all this information, like 2602 was your 2620. 2620, yeah. my yeah, yeah, bad. Yeah. 2620 was your party promotion company, now, yeah. and you started throwing parties, you know, and, and, and that's a big, big staple here in Atlanta. So, like, is that how you got to the introduced to the artist or was it just your own no i got introduced um to the artist being in the street you know when i was coming up 16 years old i was in all the clubs popping off and this is when puff was at howard and he you know he was jodeci man he was like dressing like them niggas like so all the the school motherfuckers we liked to be around because they had all the, the college girls you know what i'm saying and, and so we we just be in the mix and that's how i met a lot of them and then when i came here I had the opportunity to throw parties. Like, you know, there was this Ooh, group of shit. colleges that really didn't fuck with the city. Like in 92, the city wasn't fucking, Atlanta wasn't fucking with the school like that. And it wasn't like y'all was, it, was a, it wasn't like this. You know what I'm saying? It was like them school niggas fucked them like that. It should be right. fight, all types of wild shit. But because we was in the street, we knew everybody. And so when Al Capone's, Dion's twin was a hair salon, like we started, Mess with all the hairstyle, all the lady hairstyles, you know what I'm saying? And just kind of integrating within the city. And they were like, oh, they all right. And then as like the Shanti Dazes and everybody became industry executives, they would bring all the outcasts and all that to the school party because that's that was the mecca of Atlanta. Like really it was. Like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody I know from that era and obviously prior to mine, they came here and never left. They came to Atlanta and never left. It was quality of living. You could see your money. You know, biggest spectrum of black colleges. You also had Georgia Tech, Georgia, Georgia State. So, you know, it was one of them things where, like, I didn't really need the industry. It kind of came. I'm sorry, I didn't intend to need or want to be in the industry. It kind of came to me by default. But it's, I mean, it's been exciting because, you know, rappers always want to be like street niggas. It was never, like, I ain't never met a, a you know, until Jay Z, really, who was doing what they said they was doing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody a big dope boy. It's that and third, you, you know some dope boys, but I hadn't met nobody until 95 when I met Jay that was actually in the street doing it. So you was around when Reasonable Doubt was being recorded? Oh, when they, when they started it, the, the construction of the album, I was around. Goodness gracious. How did you manage to get into that fold? Because that now, 2020 hindsight, we know that that's one of the most, you know, epic hip hop projects ever released. But yeah. did you know at that time that it was going to be that major? <clears throat> nah, I just knew I liked him. Clark Kent, I had hired DJ Clark Kent to DJ for me at the warehouse in the garage a couple times. He ended up taking me on the road with him. He saw my light before I saw it, and he was like, come on. You know what I'm saying? So we'd be at Shack House when he played in Orlando every two weeks with him and Dennis Scott. Like, he just started taking me places, and I'd be on the mic, and he'd be, you know, DJing. And he said, you got to meet my guys. They want to do something in Atlanta. And so we went up to New York. And I used to like get on him because he had like black, Jay had uh, 560 State Street is a famous address, obviously saying it. But we used to go to the spot, he had black lack of furniture and shit. I'm like, you bam ass nigga, like how what you- the fuck is black lack of furniture? Black lack like a piano wood, you know what I'm talking about? And I used to be <laughs> on this nigga head like, but he was cool because he had a station wagon buggy with BBS. He had a, a Honda Accord joint and he had a buggy out being something up. But I thought <laughs> hey, he was man, cool. You had the light, Jay-Z pull up and a Honda, Honda station wagon. Oh no, he had a and Honda. BBS is <laughs> He had a Honda right. Accord station wagon with BBS. Big ass lip. Man, shut the f- <laughs> I ain't never heard no shit like that before. Yeah. Shut up, Kenny. <laughs> yeah. He had a buggy eye uh, Lexus. He probably still got it. It's probably brand new. 
Yeah, but that probably was, got that, one mile. That's how I met him, and, and we just all got cool. You know, and it's crazy because twenty we said just celebrated twenty four years in Reasonable Doubt. It's arguably one of the best rap albums ever. Yeah, yeah. it definitely crazy. is, man. It definitely, it definitely is. Definitely more. Ain't no yeah. to me, Clip. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so you you get to a point where you uh you know experience a lot of success, but I I always personally wanted to ask you because I know I've learned a lot more from the bump in my head and the failures than I had from the wins. So what would you say was your when you got to Atlanta and got into it? What was the first time you really had to, you know, sit down and reevaluate some shit. It was the first failure in, that you experienced after all the success. Um, I, I really don't look at life like failures. I agree with you. Like trial and error is a part of our journey for those who didn't have an opportunity. Like I, I couldn't finish school. I was making three thousand dollars a week at the at the warehouse. I wasn't going back to school. It was like I I you know what I'm saying, seeing more money probably than I was in the street because, you know, street money get lopsided. It ain't no win, you know what I'm saying? And so when I like would experience something, I would just take the, the knot, you know what I'm saying, and keep it moving. I ain't really, I never felt like the things that I wasn't succeeding that was failure. I just saw it as like opportunity to adapt and adjust, or it was time for me to pivot in a certain way. I didn't look at it, I, I never did. And it's so fucking crazy you ask me a question, like until COVID, I never dealt with childhood trauma until COVID. I just always would get, shit would happen, I compartmentalize it, tuck it and keep it moving, cause I just, I was taught to go, you know what I'm saying? I've been sitting down for four months, nigga. I'm like, I'm getting emotional and shit for no reason and shit. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm like identifying with things that like, cause you know, when you see your, you know, at my age, in my mid forties, it's like, you look at like the community, that, that's part of you. It's not, it's no longer I'm here doing me and I'm not concerned. What happens in the community affects my children, affects my mama. If she can't go out and she gets sick or, and so I'm just feeling all these different types of things. But to your question, I just, I never felt that because I would compartmentalize and put it away. I mean, I've seen niggas get their head blown off. I done been shot at. I done been locked up. You know what I'm saying? Well, Axel Rose looking nigga was running the block. Not no big, burly, strong, nobody. Five foot. He used to carry a little toothbrush with it. I done seen the wildest shit you could see. You can see he was at the You know block what I'm saying? And if y'all don't know who Axel, Axel Rose looking This is Gun and Roses, the little motherfucker. The little white the, man. I done man. seen the wildest <laughs> shit. You said something that I want you to speak on a little bit more. You said street money get lopsided. Oh, get lopsided. Like, could no you win. speak on that for the for the young niggas watching this right now? Can you speak yeah. on that part right now? Go up and down, you little stupid fuck. <laughs> yeah, it ain't it ain't no wins in the street game because you're gonna you're gonna lose more than you make, and it's just it's the it's the law of the streets. It, you don't know nobody, and you look at the runs. I mean, I've been hearing my motherfuckers come out the woodwork from the '80s that I never knew nothing about because they only had a year run, and they were so busy with the with the plug and da da da. But like, you know, Fifty Cent just got one of these uh, Spanish dudes. He was from the Bronx and come to find out my man Fat Joe. A lot of people know him, but I was bugging like, who? Where was he? But that's the that's the 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 length of time you get in the streets. You don't know. You name one motherfucker had a ten year run. Name one. Name one motherfucker that had a five year run. I'm talking about really getting some real paper, and it, it's lopsided. And then you see with the '88 crime bill, and not like if I got locked, I got locked up '91. If I got locked up '92, I might still be in jail. It's lopsided, you don't win, you know what I'm saying? And if I didn't have money to get a lawyer, right. I'd have been twisted, you know what I'm saying? And then obviously- Especially in Maryland. They get to play with you yeah. how they want. Yeah, and I got aid. locked up, he, he'll tell you, I, was, I got locked up in Frederick, Maryland. It's not worse than the Commonwealth State, which is across the street. Virginia, but that's the worst you can catch. That's the worst time you can catch. But you know, you, you, don't, you don't win. It's, it's a lopsided game. Man, that's real. So like, you being a lifestyle specialist, like I just tell you, ask a couple questions about some of the things that I was impressed with that people might not know you did. The button down t-shirts, like when oh, that was big, up button up, button yeah. up shirts. I was about to say this nigga had niggas wearing button up t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, damn boy, you as a lifestyle you coach, you a cold man. nigga. I'm glad you caught that. When the God, fuck damn. was they wearing that shit to? I didn't realize game? I said that yeah. shit. A button up tee. Yeah. We need to come with them, nigga. The button up. I try. Button. Look, I try to say it low, like button up. Button, button up's button up. my bad. Yeah. But shit, with well, shirt, sure, fuck it, niggas, fuck up. Yeah. Ain't no wins, yeah. nigga. Fuck yeah. it. But yeah. like, I don't think a lot of people know that that era, like, uh, uh, what was it? Change clothes there. That's what Change Daisy clothes made the clothes. But what was the name of the uh, Brian Kenny? Brian, Brian Kenny. Yeah. Yep. Ryan Brian Kenny. Kenny. We was the second black designers ever in Saks Fifth Avenue before Virgil, before anybody. The only ones before us was Willie Way in the eighties. Keep it two Virgils yeah. with me. Yeah, yeah. And, Ooh, and Willie so, Way. And so we, yeah, Willie Way was the first. Ryan Kenny was the second. But the and who? The, uh, in Will, Saks. Yeah, Saks Fifth Avenue. Grace the walls of Saks. But any, no department stores were carrying black anything back then. There was no. You couldn't get your thing because I shopped so much. Terry Zimmerman, big shout out to Terry Zimmerman, 
white lady was the manager of the men's department. She was like, yo, you spent so much money in here. I, heard, I saw your thing. Usher had your thing on VH1. I was like, can you put it in the store? Done. And we had already had like 300 boutique doors, but we didn't have, but the, the idea came from, cause we were growing up, like hip hop was uh, big white tees and baggy sweatpants, I mean, uh, baggy hoop shorts at this point, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And we were like, hip hop is growing up and we were getting real money. Like prior to our generation, it was, you know, 100 million, 200 million, 300 million, half, you know, but we, we were a billion dollar business now. And it was like, we don't look like a billion, now we run around here, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, you know what I mean? Yeah, put it together. Right. And so we uh I don't like how y'all put the pressure on regular niggas though. Nah, but y'all Because y'all was like, man, take that shit out. Like, nigga, we ain't got no hundred million. Yeah. And them motherfuckers <laughs> and them shirts was what expensive. What the fuck is too. Two yeah. now? Now you know the fucked up part? I went to get one and then I went to put the motherfucker on and these ain't clothes. I'm like, man, why the fuck we got the with a button at the clothes? I ain't know what the fuck you a had no wrist button. Yeah, no wrist button. No wrist button. Yeah. I'm like, what yeah, the then you would have to buy the, buy the, the, the cufflinks exactly. from the Range Schwartz was another five. See, that's out. exactly what the fuck. I'm, as soon as I heard that, I was like, man, these niggas crazy. Yeah. Another five. But, but you know what it was? It was like it was like it was like culture shock. Like at that time, music was changing. Everything was changing. I look at music, the music industry in ten year lows. And at one portion of that ten years, it'd be dark and everything be drugged out and just super. Dark and then right. it'd be happy in sync and da da da, da and all this. fuck with no drugs. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm talking about? <sighs> not bad then. Not so, fuck with no drugs. Yeah, though. exactly. So, but you know, it, it gets to a point where like you gotta identify when that, that phase is coming. If you really wanna, we were talking about this outside before um, y'all came, you know, if you can really identify when culture shifting, right, you can really enter that real game of monetary gain. You know what I'm saying? That real game of monetary gain. If you can identify like That's shit. The book title. Hello? Uh, Y'all heard that? Cameras? Okay, great. <laughs> but I like, I like, like, my, my, my mindset is like, I want to be involved with the next wave of thought process mm -hmm. when it comes to fashion and lifestyle because before me, you know, these spirit companies couldn't prove an ROI on lifestyle. Like, how the motherfucker gonna make us some money? How? How he gonna make, how that, how? Tell us what we want. You know what I'm saying? Like, how? And then when I did it, it was double down. So, and I'm sure we're gonna get in that, but to I the I hope you didn't tell them how. No, I, 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 I did, but I kept perfecting it. And there that's the go. thing about black folk. We were talking about this outside too. It's like the whole shit with Trump and why shit seems so crazy, but black folk mad because they can't kill us. We don't go nowhere. They can't kill us in business. They can't kill us physically. I mean, they can kill one of us, but we're gonna come back stronger, more, more resourceful more necessary and i think that you know this has been my mindset i just knew that hip-hop needed to grow up i wanted to be a catalyst we ended up becoming the second black designers ever in sacks like i mentioned and then you know we uh you know was in the we're in the record books Good. I love how this nigga just casually throw yeah, history out there. Right, like this, so I this, hired this, DJ Clark Kent. Yeah. He was struggling. Yeah, me and Jay Z. He said he was struggling. I did not say Clark Kent was struggling. Tony Rome, I did not say you were struggling. I was at I was at Jay Z's five twenty State Street. He had so black look, lack of furniture. Jay Z in this motherfucking Honda, right? Nobody can get hove out of this bitch. <laughs> it's crazy. You're funny. So I. Like at, at this point, he didn't fuck. Is, hold up, your boy didn't fuck the whole plate. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy, ain't boy, I got one sleep. Let me know one leg. Now he want to share. Rob, I said he had some shit motherfucker right there. until the last leg. He's been doing his mean uh, 60 about. minutes interview of looking over, crab leg pop. Y'all know what this part is. Yeah. You're catching that game. Yeah, he enjoying the crabs. Yes, catching sir. that game. He got meat over there. Yeah, all the meat right there. <laughs> hey, exactly man, welcome to the trap house, Kenny Burns. I, I know you done got rich and shit. You ain't been in the trap house in a minute. But this is the official 85 South Show I trap house. We're trapping right here. Look at Marvin Gaye looking at you. He proud hey. of you. All that shit you said. <laughs> hey. Marvin Gaye like, man, niggas another, is really out here yeah. getting it. He another DC guy. Another DC guy. Another DC guy. Another one. Another one. Me and Marvin Gaye got the same birthday, so that picture is perfect. You bullshit. I swear to God, April 2nd. Well, April 2nd. He birthday April 2nd. Yes, sir. I'm over with the Taurus. Fuck it. Exactly. Look at this nigga, man. His <laughs> like lips look, 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 look like he got on some goddamn lip gloss and shit. Hold up, man. You know we got a research department over here at the 85 South Show. We got some more of your facts over here. Come on. This ain't it. Y'all are journalists. Yeah, we trying to make it right. You know, when the lifestyle specialist was coming, we got to make sure we get the people that don't know. We got to have some motherfucking effects on the shit. OGs and people that we fuck with could like, I like, you know, we met on another tip. Yeah. Nigga, I ain't know nothing about all that shit. Oh, yeah. Hell no. Yeah. I knew of it, but I ain't know, like, how deep. Oh, I, deep, what, deep. Somebody said, what tip y'all so, met so on? So, no, so we had, I had consulted 
for this tobacco company. Mm -hmm. And I kept telling them, you know what I'm saying, that he'd be perfect for Backwoods or Dutch Master because they had both. Right. And so they had uh, finally came, you know, with an X, Y, you know, with, a, with an opportunity. So I had reached out to him. He said, boom, and I need, I need, I need to get in cash too. Can you, you said, you said, yeah, I need to I get in cash. cash. Can you get in? Okay. <laughs> Hey, my boy, hey, what that, my boy say, he said, I'm getting on that plane, and I got cash. <laughs> when I get there, it go, it go be in cash. <laughs> no, look, I don't interfere with nobody hustle. If, if you want something, Mr. Klein, and it's the way the man won't get his bread, then you got to apply. Hey, you would think we would do a drug deal. It was that why not, too. He, I was, he was like, I'm like, you got it? He was like, yeah. I'm like, all right, come back here then. <laughs> he walked to the back. I was like, here, you got it? He said, yeah. He, he lifted out. He said, the envelope. I said, ooh, that motherfucker did. Well, guy, give me that. <laughs> I like, like doing with you, Mr. Kitty Bird. I like doing with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, hey, well, yes, sir. No, but that's how I remember. But I, you know, that's that's what I've done my whole career, though. I, I love identifying superstars early. Like, you know what I'm saying? And he clearly obviously had a name. That's why they wanted to do business with him. But when you got to pair things with company, pair people with companies, you got to pick, you know, you got to make the right choices. You know what I'm saying? He obviously is. What are that, what does you feel like you get that vision from to be able to see where, you see somebody like a fly who just raw talent and say, you know what, this will work. What it like? When do you think you perfected that? Being able to have that vision to be able to see that, you know, all right, Los, this is, he'll be perfect for this. Or Chico, he'll be perfect for this. Like, I think get that I think that was my God-given ability. I think that's how I survived the street. Ultimately, I think that's how I've been able to be as blessed as I am. Um, you know, because people make the world go round. Like, I don't mean that in a cliche right. sense. I mean, I, I treat the janitor. To, to, to hold the same motherfucking way. I always say, it don't matter what I got, I'm gonna tell you what it is. If it changes, I'm gonna tell you. I, I just don't believe in, in misguiding. You know what I'm saying? The problem with our people is that we misguide each other. You know what I'm saying? Like during this whole pandemic, you got a whole bunch of false prophets jumping to the front trying to be speakers on activism and politics. Nigga, you ain't been on the front line of nothing. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no say so in politics. You had the whole primary to say X, Y, and Z. And I'm type nigga whole responsible. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like we we all we got, like in a real way. Like, and if we don't put each other in, in, in perspective, it ain't about cancel culture. That's a whole nother topic. This is about holding people responsible. We can't have all this power and not be held responsible. Right. We got a lot of powers telling them before you pulled up. I was like, to be able to have all the followers y'all have and had a conversation y'all have, y'all are educating. You're doing it in your way. It's right. like my first time speaking at the college university. I asked the professor, I said, can I please curse? I'm not gonna say shit damn motherfucker, goddamn, t you know. Right. But I got to be able, they got, they got to hear it, that's I the gotta, only way. That's the only way you can connect right. to right. the younger. And people are always like, why the youngest fuck with you so much? Because I don't discard them. I take their opinions valuably. You know what I'm saying? Not just take their opinion. I value, like little, my son swears little babies the goat. I grew up working with the goats, nigga, like, he swears, little baby, and I can't be like, he ain't the goat, I gotta see, and then he hit me with that motherfucking new record. First time I ever heard him say some conscious shit in my life. I'm thoroughly impressed and hopeful for that <clears throat> generation, you know what I'm saying? But I wasn't finna shun him before I got that. Right. Hey, he don't get enough credit. He don't. Shout out to go hard. Yeah, yeah he don't. Hard for the he city. killed he that don't. record. What's the, what's yeah, the name of the record, that, anybody? Uh, the, which, which, which one? The one he talking the about? The one with the uh, political joint. Yeah, yeah the political yeah. Oh, he went nuts. Yeah, he, he went nuts. So big shout out to him. Consistency wins all the time. All Research the time. Research department, give me the name of that song ASAP. Yeah, all we, the time. The we need that. But you know, I had John Ossoff who running for state senate for Georgia on my show. I told, I started the show off with that song, told him how he needed Lil Baby. I ain't had no conversation with nobody. That's just what I do. I feel like I feel like that's 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 when it comes to OGs. Uh, uh, they don't they don't the bigger picture. Yeah, the bigger the picture. The they don't they don't they don't shed the knowledge. Right. You see what I'm saying? Research they always are. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Is it um, pretentious? Yeah, but that well, they always withhold. You know what I mean? They withhold. But, but that's what I'm saying. They always trying to showboat and, and, mm -hmm. and acting like let me show you what I got instead of saying let me show you how I got it. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to know what you got. Show me how you got it. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Because then I can use that knowledge and go get my own. Absolutely. Man. You dig what I'm saying? You trying to showboat, <clears throat> showboat and, and trying to say, oh, this is what you got. So you have left the, the younger generation to figure it out on themselves yeah. and come up with a plan on, damn, how you got that? Well, because the curriculum that they teaching is not tell, teaching us how to get nothing. Right. You just so happen to break the code. So once you broke the code, 
you got to give the younger generation that knowledge. And that's why I just bought five more books today, and I hate eating. Yeah, you got to do it. If you want to know nigga, something, you got to find out about it. But guess yeah. what? It's in the book, nigga. Right. Everything that you even want to think about knowing or you even want to know, it's in a book, bro. Like, some people don't have that, the ability, us, to speak out when be on stage in front of a whole bunch of people and you have that ability to speak. So some people are just so highly educated. They're like, well, let me write it down. Yeah. Hopefully somebody will figure it out. Because I told somebody, books ain't nothing but notes. Yeah, facts. It's just what a motherfucker thinking. And imagine if you wrote down everything you did in your life, what your book would be. That motherfucker. And, that, and that's, that's real. Like, you, if you just told stories Shit. through your experience. For real. Right but, but niggas I, don't want to read it 20, no, 40 years. Yeah. They going to they read it now. Down. I want to. They want to read your book now. If you find an Einstein book right now, you tell me you're going to read that shit, you're going to be like, man, I got to hear what that nigga was talking about. What? Well, I want to address two things you said. I think OGs, they don't want to share the game because they don't want to be out the game. And what a lot of them don't, I'm just saying. Oh. But, 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 but not even that they're old. You know, you know, we as a culture, it's almost, it says in hip hop that mm -hmm. once you get a certain age, you out of here. Right. And when, when, when this generation, brought the billion hours to the table, they don't want to go nowhere. Right. But instead of saying, all right, let me take these youngins and put some real time into them, tell them what I know, <laughs> what happened with us. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. But no, nah, a lot of these dudes took them, didn't treat them right. Made money off of them. Yeah, took and, did, and instead of saying like, oh, I see your light. Your superpower is amazing. This is what it is. That's what happened to me. That's why God rested there under her rail. Like I give him ultimate credit because, you know, I'm a street guy in a business that is music. Oh, you gotta tell that story. You just, you skipping over it. The, he went, he said he went home. He had to go back home for some probation shit. Mind you, all this is in the documentary that he put out. He had to go back home for I some like probation. No, you go crazy. And uh, when he went back home for the probation, he found out Andre Harrell was coming through DC. And uh, it was a place on, um, on 14th Street that used to throw parties and shit. So he found out that he was coming through, found out that he liked light-skinned women in uh, Don Perignon. <laughs> And uh, so when he came, when, uh, when he threw the party, he made sure he had both of them for him. So uh, dude was impressed. He said, man, hey, man, I ain't never seen nobody put it together like this. I asked him to come to New York Monday morning. And he said, he told him what, to be there at 8 o'clock. You know what I mean? He ain't come till 10, but he came and he was like, you know, man, I'm here. And then he said he gave him, what, 60000 first? If you do street team market promotions, it went from 60 to 100 to 150 in a year. And, and the reason I love him and what I was saying to you about OGs is like, he took the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, time is all a young black mind needs. You know what I'm saying? To and show. It's, it's exactly time, and that's what he did. He showed me Basquiat. He showed first man, black man I ever seen with a driver. You know what I'm saying? In the Rolls Royce, first, had an apartment on the Upper West Side of New York when black folk wasn't even. You know what I'm saying? Whole top of the motherfucking apartment. I'm like, damn, this is possible. He's like, yeah, and you got the <clears throat> power to make it happen. I'm like, nigga. And I'm imagine, you know, I'm I'm fresh off of like I'm just I, I got I had to, uh, my my mother had moved to Atlanta, <clears throat> so we all here now. They came knocked on her door because my probation said I ain't report in six months. So extradition, they could have held me for six months while they figured some dumb shit. I'm in the middle of my, tra you know, my Transition, trajectory, right. you know, my trajectory. Like I was popping, like right. I was already the party nigga. Now I'm in the music <clears throat> business, so I'm like I can't afford that. So I drove, got in the car, like. 35 minutes later, drove to D.C., went to get my lawyer. They came looking for me. He fixed it. Whole time, he told you the story. Drake, come. And my thing is, like, at that point in my life, that saved my life. I wasn't moving, thinking about them people. I was like, I'm off paper. I felt like I was off paper. And I had reported, by the way, but they, the, the clerk had made a file mistake. And this mm -hmm. is how they do black folk all the time. Said I could email my shit, I'm sorry, fax my shit. It wasn't even no, I mean, if it was email, but they said I could fax my shit, I ain't have to report. Mm -hmm. That shit could have had me, I had 10 years back, I had a fucking meek meal. I had a meek meal, like, and so, but my point is, he, he, he got me at the most crucial time in my life, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and pointed me in the right direction. I met my wife right after that. He gave me my first piece of real art, you know what I'm saying, like, and my life has been because of his offering, because he took the time. And that's what OGs don't do now. And the other thing you said, you said some other key shit that I wanted to address. But you said, um, I forgot it, but that's the most important piece. So rest in peace, Andre Herrera. Yeah, and I, I, that's what you said about <clears throat> OGs, you know, hip hop being a game with an old 
is out. I hate that about this because we the only people that put that standard on our superstar. Right. Like you look at rock and roll and country, the motherfuckers be old as you still see all the richest started that. <laughs> walking around old in a motherfucker performing for hundreds of thousands of people, Forever. but for some reason. Frankie Beverly and May, 70 years, 70 something years still old. Still going exactly. on the road. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they and but for some reason, hip hop, what is which has done the most for the streets, right. no matter where you come from in this country, hip hop has done more for the streets than anything else. And when guys get older, they automatically lose their luster because they old when in reality. We don't we need to stop doing that to our people like even if you don't like it there's still a lane for guys who you know made history they paved the way yeah they paved the way and this it should be you know something that should be in place for i mean i'm talking about and we, honored yeah me and los yeah. just did uh and, and we always have tried to do that with our platforms even you know in the in the old school battles and stuff that we do hey what's up Get youtube it's me hannibal birds this cop stupid as fuck Hopefully I don't die of asthma, because I have that. <laughs> it's mostly under control, but you know, it flares up every now. Asthma doesn't get a lot of respect out here, though. As far as diseases go, asthma doesn't get cancer love in these streets. <laughs> you don't see these commercials, merchandise, celeb endorsements, none of that. There's no asthma walks, because everybody would have asthma attacks. <laughs> People think asthma's hilarious. When I pull out my inhaler in front of my friends, I might as well pull out a kazoo the way they laughed at me. <laughs> hey, look at Hannibal, puff, puff, puff. I don't want to die. <laughs> look at him, he can't breathe without that shit. Puff, puff. OK, I'm good now, y'all. <laughs> Miami nights. Like we just did something with Dougie Fresh, did an old school battle with Dougie Fresh Super beatboxing. Classic. And for a lot of youngins, like has been hitting us like, man, I didn't know who he was. Dougie Fresh. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, I didn't know who Dougie Fresh was. And right. for us to be able to be cool enough to incorporate that into something that people like us for, but at the same time give that spotlight and that shine to a legend, right. is something that's important, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what we try to do all the way around. And to tap on that too, when I, when I play Sly, Right, let's get it. When I that. play right. that, 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 American not, Soul, let's not, let's not skip that. That man killed that thing, let's man. Let's not skip over that. Ah. Yeah. nigga was talking listen, about milk and mama. That. You see how he did that? Oh, he's like this. Listen, <laughs> it, it was, it was. I did slide. He <laughs> learned that shit from you. You right. been but doing listen, that shit this whole no time. episode, right. But listen, real when, I, when I first did it, it was like, all right, I'm acting and actually doing music, so I'm doing both. Of, of my dreams and passions at okay, the same with time. Love. With true love, not really, it, it fucked the dollar. I'm actually doing something that I always dreamed of doing. Of, like, when I seen Jamie play Ray, I'm like, ah, I can't wait till my time to actually perform and be somebody else and love. really live that dream. So when I did it, it made me, that was the first, I wanna say that was the first start of me tapping into revolutionary because I had to go back and do homework on yeah. Sly. And when I, cause now in the, in the acting mindset, I gotta be this character, I gotta know this character, I got to live through, you know, he gotta yeah. live through me right now. Become I gotta become him. So once I started doing the homework and I was like, oh, this, the been around in our lives multiple times, but a guy like this don't get that much recognition. Or like you said, older guys, y'all know this. Why you ain't telling us? You feel me? <laughs> now, this was the first group, diverse group Back then, when all the, the civil rights and all that was going through, this was a whole nother lane, and he really paved the way for you to even be in a group with somebody yeah. white, or, no, nah, we breaking barriers. And he was making songs like, don't call me nigga whitey. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> but Sean, and he wasn't no time out. Time out. That nigga no got call. a song called, don't call me nigga whitey. For don't listen, call bro. me nigga whitey. Listen, Where my phone at? I listen. got to get that. I hope and that's cold. on Apple And it's cold. But, but listen, and that. it's and cold. He got, and he got white people whitey. in his band. He got white people, Asians. He got all type of motherfuckers in his band. You pick, nigga. Swell. Yeah, the llama. I saw it on the In the band. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, what he didn't do By the way, you that was funny than the motherfucker. Hey, what that, that llama, that, that motherfucker will bite. That motherfucker spit on that you. That motherfucker. Right. <laughs> I was like, hey, ho, y'all got to get that motherfucker right here. <laughs> 
He buzzed it. He almost caught a left, right, right, left, right. Hey, <laughs> but no, but even playing that role, it, it made me, uh, uh, what I want to say, uh, respect yeah. anybody who paved the way or anybody who had some type of impact because it's really not about the name. And, and it started making me going back and looking at all the the unheard of heroes we got, the ones that's not being praised and stuff like this. So it's like we got so many people. Yeah, don't forget the history. legacy. You, we can't so many forget legacies. The, we can't forget that, the yeah. legacy because the legacy is history. Yeah. Right. And when it's they a don't part tell of your history. And, right. And when they don't tell the legacy, they get to rewrite the history. And they will write your ass out of history. Man, Listen to me. These bitches they will, been writing shit they out, will, man. They will erase you. And that, that's the thing. People used to always ask me. Why you shooting everything? Why you taping everything? Why you? Oh, I thought they was about talking about the street shit again. Oh no, 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 no! Oh hell no! I can tell you that's what you're going on, Kenny. <laughs> you gotta give me an intro, man. Nah. Like, whoa, Kenny, what them niggas do? Yeah. What, what, what year was this? Yeah, yeah. Was this before the Love parties crazy. and shit? <laughs> that was definitely before the party. <laughs> Actually, we had a big gun back. No. So, um, but I was saying, what was I? Oh, we was they were station yeah, wagon. Yeah. Then we had that bitch on 14. He had pulled up. BBS is. I'm telling you, nigga was clean. All right, go ahead. No, see, you, you made me think about another station wagon moment on 14. Hey, I'm not. Don't do that. When you took the door panels. Do watch this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Hey, no, boys, man. You I mean, were just playing. The statue of limitations ain't on. We don't know. They might switch it around. He already did time for that. Statue of limitations. He was playing. You didn't hear that part. He did the time for this shit. We ain't got time for them trying to bring no shit back up. the door panels that pop right open. Anyway, so I was saying, they will erase you if you let them. I know. So document everything and remind motherfuckers. Like, I have no problem. Like I just posted my, my uh, reasonable doubt plaque yesterday. I just you know was celebrating the joint. I posted every picture I ever had with these motherfuckers. Let me just post my plaque, right. right? Just so you niggas know that Big Head Kenny had the reasonable doubt on Priority Freeze records, not Big. Def Jam. Priority Freeze. I mean, but you got to remind them because they will they will erase you. Right. I want to see the mother. And, and, and but then and but then this is the thing too though. By me being 28, I'm like. Damn. I'm like, yeah, cause when you said 92, when you just getting popped out, I was getting popped out my mama pussy ass. So it was like, damn. One more time, nigga. Popped out my mama pussy ass. I'm <laughs> like, damn. Had the so stroke like, mouth. So it's like. <laughs> yeah. That nigga turned to the stroke mouth pussy ass. Hey, and don't come, you gotta understand, that 28 years. Yeah, that, that plant cold in the motherfucker. Let me see that but that 28 years of you been handling your business. Ooh, yeah. You dig what I'm saying? And for us younger people, we got to know that because like you say, they rewrite history and try to say this yeah. is what happened and this is that ain't what happened. Yeah. And then they be like, well, how do you know? You don't have any references. Yeah. <laughs> One so day they like, gonna well, say damn, we, we was don't. three white men who started the show. Right. That yeah, was focused on racial relations. That, and that him, shit was him, crazy. Give it time. <laughs> we already receiving hate mail from the white, white community. People, they right. they right. definitely eyeballing this. They might not yeah. try to get it now, but yeah. they've been. It's a nice show. Be ashamed if somebody bought it. And 85 uh, South was originated by such and such. Yeah, exactly. Implemented their own no, people. What? You got too many owners. They can't <laughs> buy it. I'm going to tell y'all this, though. I'm going to tell you this to your point, though, uh, DC. Like, at the end of the day, you got to enjoy your journey, man. Right. I think a lot of the times people get these lofty dreams. Because we all have lofty dreams. We all want to be My uber shit successful. Dumb. My shit dumb. Yeah, but, but you also got to know that that's probably not going to happen. Some of it gonna happen. No, and I'm some of the, no, no, this, and I, some of this no, no, listen to happen. what I'm saying though. <laughs> you can't possibly be able to achieve your dream if you don't appreciate the journey. We we get in our own way. Like we get to the point of like dysfunction because we think it ain't happening with such such spoke or such such just did it. God damn it, I've been doing that shit. You know how long I've been working before I actually got equity in the brand? You know how much. But I wanna say it it will work, just like how you said, because you don't I don't like to to, 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 to kind of like shine niggas' dreams and hopes and saying that he ain't gonna do shit. Because I was once one of them children and a nigga told me I wasn't gonna do it and I believe Well, I'm not telling you you're not gonna do no, it. No, 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 I ain't saying no, that. No, am I saying your dreams won't happen? Not saying that, yeah. but I'm saying though, <clears throat> if I was just a little bit more aggressive at right. that time and standpoint, he wouldn't, that <clears throat> wouldn't be able to get to me. Right. You see what I'm saying? But by me having not having a, a resource or a real reliable backbone to be like, damn, well, maybe the nigga right. Maybe I am sorry than a motherfucker. Yeah. But I really wasn't. He just, I really wasn't. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? I, he bullshitting. I was really great. But he no, so happened yeah. to be manipulated my mind. I was like, maybe I am sorry. No, but that's the I point. Know. DC, that's the point, though. That, the point is, is that when you focus only on the dream, right. you're judging your steps on the dream. You're not judging your steps on the things in front of you that you can get right now to get. And that's what I'm saying. Like for me, even with Uncle Nearest, I know we're going to talk about it. 
I created influencer programs that all spirit companies use. I didn't, I didn't fucking copyright that shit. Right. I'm not getting paid, you know, for every, I should be getting a piece of, but, but guess what happened though? I didn't block my blessings by worrying about that shit. I didn't know, it's okay. I, it's okay I didn't know. Right. I kept moving in this direction and ultimately my dream, my, I was telling Chico outside, Los, in DC for y'all came, my dream has nothing, like, has everything to do with what I want and what I see for myself. What's happening is the best thing that ever happened to me out of any business I've ever done. And I've done some great shit. But until Uncle Nears, I didn't really have equity in nothing. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And that's what I'm trying to just tell Just working, people. just putting pieces but, together. But because that you, you ain't even no legacy. Something that you said that, that motivated me throughout that journey is uh, to, to be a brand, you have to become the brand itself. Of course. You know what I mean? And I use that through a lot of, because I used to drive a Saturn view, nigga, with like 250,000 miles on it, but I was the Saturn when I was in that bitch. Because that was the only way I was going to be able to get the fuck up out that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, As if I, am, I had to become one with the Saturn view. And it's like a lot of those lessons that I learned on the come up, like I used to have to walk home from the, from the, uh, from the repair shop when the shit would break down. And on them walks home, I would always think like, Man, if I just allow myself to stay in this space, I ain't gonna never get out of it. I ain't gonna never be able to make myself greater than what it is that I am right now. And that's something that I learned from watching that documentary, which you need to put back out somewhere. We're gonna show it on they page right after this show. Oh, okay. please, don't, 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 don't flex. Listen, that's it. everybody need to watch this motherfucker because like I said, at that point in my life, I was at a crossroads. I had went to Winston-Salem State University, got a degree in communications, radio, television, went down to where I did my internship at, and they told me I was going to be making $6.25 an hour part-time. Fuck no. And I said, fuck no, I'm not. Like, Shit. if I'm going to be poor and struggling, I'd much After rather be poor degrees. and struggling building my own legacy. And I done been getting my own money since I was nine years old, so it's never been about money to me. I know how to make money. I've always known how to make money, but this is... This is my life. This is, I'm about to go out into the world. This is the legacy. And mind you, my father ain't have a headstone. This nigga got killed when I was two. I ain't have enough to leave a headstone. Most of the men in my family is in the streets, in jail, or fucked off somewhere. So I'm like, all right, I, got, I know the examples that's been set for me by my people, but what am I going to do? Right. And when I came in contact with his documentary, seeing somebody that was from the city and the shit that you said, it just made me realize that, okay, I got the ability to make whatever I want to make happen, happen. I just got to do this shit and be focused enough to be able to make it happen. And that's why I decided to stay in North Carolina instead of going back to D.C. Because I knew if I went back to D.C., the, the opinions, not even just more of the same, but the opinions of the people who matter would affect me differently. Oh, okay. Like, for example, if you chasing your dream, like you said, buddy who said you wasn't shit, this had to be a nigga that you respected in some capacity. He was the coach. You're right. So <laughs> right. he told me, but take your ass home. I was hurt. Right. And I didn't want to have to deal with that because I knew that from watching the documentary and just knowing how shit go, when you chase any dream, you ain't going to be rich overnight. It don't work like that. You got to hustle. So I knew if I was hustling in that part of me that everybody knew me for always being the fly nigga and always having my way. When I wasn't doing that, I didn't want the people whose opinions to matter to be like, damn, Bane, you fucked up. You're in the Saturn, ain't you, nigga? That bitch got every light glowing on the dashboard. Nigga, you trying to land an airplane? I ain't want <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I ain't want to have to deal with that. So I stayed where I didn't know nobody, and I had to create my own following and legacy and everything. But I think that a lot of people need to understand that we, as especially young black men who watch this shit, you have a responsibility to be true to who you are and find out what that is and beat the pavement as much as you can. <clears throat> You'll never get there if you don't. Like me and this nigga came in contact with each other. We don't mind, none of us mind telling the truth about the journey. Like we was broke them first seasons a while now. I'm talking about nigga fucked up, washing clothes at a hotel. You know how fucked up you gotta be to wash your clothes <laughs> in a hotel laundromat, nigga? <laughs> I'm talking about the bitches down there washing sheets and pillowcases and shit. We down there with our drawers in the same washing machine. <laughs> but that's what it was. And we knew that we had to get to a greater purpose. But if you allow yourself to be stuck in whatever space you in mentally, you'll never break, you'll never break out. I'm going to tell you, you said it, you said it in uh God damn it, I ain't say it. No, no, I think, I think you said it too. <laughs> Los, 
like I think you did say it, Lopes. What is I, this? I love what y'all both said about, you know, saying it not being about the money. It's and, never about the and, money. And I'm gonna but I'm gonna tell you why your profits with the ability to speak to these youngins by saying shit like that. Like, money is the root to all evil. It's attention it, now. It, it is no, but it's the root to all evil. You ain't never met a motherfucker. I, I watch unsung religiously. You ain't never seen a positive unsung. <laughs> Hey, fly. Am I lying? crazy, bro. Am I lying? And I'm not trying. I, I love the show, and I love the stories, and I love the history. But do you ever see from that era, and it's a specific era I'm talking about, right. 70s to the 90s. 90s, yeah. It's an era, motherfucker, that's just bad, man. And it, and it went bad. Crazy. But see, but, because guess what? You fish out of water. Imagine being a motherfucker that you ain't. Like, imagine looking in the mirror every day, and you this artist that they made you. And you not yourself. You struggling to deal with your own fucking identity. I know that, Chris. But that's way. money. Money make you do that. Your fucking personality told you not to do the shit. Right. It told you to be you. It told you not to walk to Brooklyn for cheesecake. It told you that shit. That was the craziest shit I it ever It told played. you that shit, but you go through this shit being not who you are, and it right. fucking comes to bite you in the ass. And I, I respect y'all. God I respect y'all before the show because I know all of y'all individually on some level, but I respect that you saying that publicly because the young value money too much. Money ain't shit to get for a motherfucker who can get some money. Right. So anybody with some ex ex exemplary, uh, creative Hold to up, offer. Bring that back, bring that back. Yeah, bring I don't know if back. I can say it correctly. No, and bring, I said it, it don't matter. Exemplary. You educate, you exemplary. educate. Yeah, exemplary. but if you have a creative. Exemplary, did you say exemplary? Yeah, if you have a skill set in the creative department that puts you, separates you from the next man, double down on that shit. Don't worry about the money. Cause you want, I could tell you right now, I've go, I've given a hundred ideas away for free to get in the door. Give me one. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I mean, I mean, no you. influencer program. No, cause this you why think we. If I could monetize that's why we that saved this. This is what I really want to get get at you about, bro. We, I see. We are. We gonna we gonna run. We we're closing on this. Side note, I know, talk about side note, I know hey, that, that as a light nice skinned nigga, that Christopher Williams on something fucked you up. Then that. I mean, don't wake me. I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm sad for Chris because he was way talented. That was not. He, I mean, he had changes and it was over. Yeah. I mean, his album changes. Yeah, it changes. He had New York on the cover and it was over. But I I, I feel he told bad. Him Nino Brown. Even That's like the really. Elder Bars, you saw the Elder Bars on something. All y'all youngers out there, you want yeah, to see some- Yeah, DeBarge got an song? The DeBarges? What? Hey, dog, Bobby DeBarge, my nigga. The one DeBarge. time for Bobby DeBarge, man. But I'm telling you, but people, my thing is mental illness is a real thing. It is. And I think people should like understand that getting into this business. If you are not a strong, if you don't have a strong mind for Ooh. your own, your own mind, this You don't know how to take criticism? Let me right. tell you something. A motherfucker can't say shit to me that I ain't already heard. They're gonna hurt your feelings. Uh, right, that I ain't, I, nigga, my daddy had all time. My parents was old my entire life. Right. What the fuck can you say to me? <laughs> right. You dig what I'm saying? They like, who daddy in there with the shake is? I'm like, damn, that's my daddy in there with the shake is. Yeah, yeah, nigga, yeah. So it's like, I wanna tell the young guys out there, bro, listen, bro, the world is a cruel world. But you have so many genuine people that will follow you, really follow your leadership. And that's what I had to, to learn. I'm such of a rider, you feel me? Like, my partner got something going on, nigga, we riding. If he, he got some shit that's successful, nigga, nigga, we riding. Nigga, I'm, nigga you, you, let go. But then I had to understand, I wasn't tapping into my own leadership Hello? because I'm too busy, just want to support somebody else. That's right. Because it's way... The pressure is so much off you when everybody's not looking at you like, what's to do? Right. You see what I'm saying? Like right now, we all the head of our family. And every day a motherfucker know they, they scrape because they know you up or they know you going to find a way. You see what I'm saying? But at that time, I was just like, shit, who, who, who way we going with today? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And instead of me trying to figure it out. Because I don't want to enable in life, you guys. Yeah. But not, not really just enable. It yeah. was just more so. Everybody got leadership qualities in them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And if you, I always tell this, and I always, you know what I'm saying, me and motherfuckers who have a team that works together because everybody have a leadership. You got the CEO. 
You got the president, you got the vice president. Okay, them all different titles. The CEO can't do what the general doing. Okay, he doing the CEO shit. Right. The CEO <laughs> needs you, motherfucker. <laughs> so you got to go be a general and lead other motherfuckers up under you. So when I see motherfuckers really doing it together and understanding and taking they, they role, but understanding your role is a leader, man, I got to yeah. give it to him, man. Yeah, I got to give it to him. Round of applause for that yeah. seat. He 28. Talking that shit. When he get to be my age, he gonna be a mother. He might run for president. You fella? I, I, that's you, a lot. That's a lot. You fella? That's a lot. No. Well, if you ain't no fella, you good. You good. But I can't. Yeah. Well, I, you good. You know. But I want to say that. I want to say this though, Chico. Like, they, tell, they tell me no. I said shit. A good woman. A good woman. Give us that stimulus check. A good woman. <laughs> a good woman. Which you 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 you're still, you're good. You're, yeah, 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 yeah. A good woman had to ask. I didn't okay, it's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. a good woman will help you get. To where you're going, and I'm gonna tell you. Can you tell that to the women though? Because no, they be acting like they no, don't know. I, I, I'm talking to everybody listening. Nah, bitch, listen. I'm, I'm talking to everybody listening. A good woman, and I'm gonna tell you this: speaking life into each other, having the ability to speak life into each other. Your partner, your partner. He, he gonna ride. He gonna be on your side. He gonna say what you want to hear nine times out of ten. Right. But your woman, and right. I'm not talking about confrontation. I ain't talking about petty. I ain't talking about spiteful. I'm talking about a person you respect. Right. That you could be friends with, make love to. It's a whole nother offering when y'all on the same page. And that type of information you get from them type relationship, I promise you, you feel it's, it. a, it's a missing ingredient. My wife met me, how you got to ride in two if you look like that? I was like, I don't know. My mama never taught me about saving them back. <laughs> she roasted your ass. I'm well, just saying. No, no but I'm saying. Well, she got a bad apple, apple ugly hey, man. <laughs> light skin with a brown skin tooth. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> But my point is, I wouldn't have identified it. I'm a grown man with thirty thousand on my mattress, and I'm thirty thousand in debt. It's certain things maternally men ain't gonna do for men, and I promise y'all this. Like I became Superman in 1997. My wife told me that I was Kenny Motherfucking Burns. I've been married 21 years since October. 21 Ooh. in this business. Shit, man, different thing when you got nah, when you got I, I give it to you. You, you, you I, give it to you. I am, man. I, I respect it. I ain't never doing that shit, but I respect it. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. Good woman, man. I respect it. He said, I ain't never done that. I, mean, I can't do it, crazy. but I respect it. I mean, I respect what you're saying, but I can't. Ladies, y'all hear that? So, so start telling us what the fuck we need to hear so I can turn into Superman. But that's the thing. What do you think those characteristics of a woman are? Because you said you having one that you respect, what do you think? The characteristics of a woman the who key word is that you respect. I mean, Too right. many niggas be looking for the wrong chick because right. another so, so cause another nigga so like can get, right. If you can give you a, general, a nigga rap. If you can give like, general bro, characteristics of what you think from girl. your experience, not just from what you because you done nah, been in the pot of game. You done been around get her. the best. <laughs> the best of the best of the and the worst of the worst. Yeah. So what do you think the characteristics of the ones that are going to motivate a man? That uh, now mind you, a man that got some shit going on. We never talking to niggas who are afraid of responsibility. That's the first thing you got to do, fellas. Right. Embrace responsibility. Right. Embrace your. You yeah. can't right. help that. You got to handle you all your business, but for the for the guys Please. who have and haven't found that one, what do you think that they need? To, the characteristics of the ones they need to look for. Up? Yeah, I would say, man. First and first and foremost, they can't be impressed easily. You know, I think a lot of times you have fans. That would touch J.O. Win. That nigga said. Yeah. Mm. That nigga said. Mm. Nigga, I'm gonna hit the keyboard. Mm. Said, mm. This nigga, this nigga play the keyboard, the guitar. This bitch, and this his bitch is impressed with a nigga that can do like this. He was like, fuck. <laughs> that was for you, my nigga. Hey, but I, but I think Even Marvin Gaye peeked from behind the sweater to hear that yeah. shit. That is, look at that. That nigga peeked out. But I just think they can't be easy. I think first and foremost can't be easily impressed. I think what's worked in my relationship, she ain't tripping off what I do. She ain't tripping on how people trip off me. When you come through that door, you, you Kenny Burns, you my husband, you daddy, these boys, and that's that's respectable. And then also too, like as men, man, we get so boastful just in our spirit, even if we're not outwardly saying like, yo, I'm doing it, but your our energy carries that. And, you know what I'm saying? And I think that a woman is the perfect, you know, your woman or a black woman, woman, period, is the perfect person to bring you down to earth. You know what I'm saying? I hear you, nigga, wash your drawers. You got to let that shit over there on the thing all day. All right, my girl would definitely tell me, hey, you need to go take a bath. I'm like, it's, it's tight. All right, sit up on. But for real, though, and I, I don't think you respect that from your guy. Your guy's not going to tell you. Your guy's not going to even be thoughtful enough to share that kind of shit with you. But it's the intangibles that make, make them superheroes. I, I promise you that. I be telling them more woman, even though y'all got to understand, 
we get our script from y'all. Yeah. Every time we gonna talk that gangster shit at all. Man, fuck these bitches, fuck these bitches. But we always be looking like, where's the bitches? Like, <laughs> <laughs> we need the bitches, man. I was like, never, I was we never can't function without the these the motherfuckers, motherfuckers, man. Yeah. Where are they? Right. We done had them conversations. Like, it, the, the energy of a woman is, is always gonna bring the, oh, the energy good. of anything priceless. up. It's priceless, but it's just, I think a lot of what I didn't learn from my perspective is just that a lot of dudes ain't who they say they are. So you can't never Instagram find no woman to give you. Up. But you they but, can't find but, no but, but this the thing. That's why it, it gets tricky because when the women get around, the fuck niggas who ain't been molded right or trained enough, you feel me? They, the women bring their little energy out on it. They go this ego that's not them. They got to act like they got to stunt. And you be like, this nigga always flexing when, when females get around. Because right. females is the energy booster to whatever it boosts you. Like when you see it, like, you know how motherfuckers be like, I want to go to a party, but it ain't a party because ain't no women. Right. Now when the women get in here, okay, shit, feel like, <laughs> feel like a goddamn party now. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like whatever that right. energy is. That's what it is. Right. You feel my, what I'm my saying? My uncle told me a long time ago, he said, man, and this has always been powerful to me, God rest his soul, because he ended up losing his life this way. But he said that, man, whenever somebody, he said, all these murders you see out here in the streets, all your friends know that one or two things always going to be involved, some money or girl. Every time. It's always going to be that. And I'm like, well, well, why just the negativity? He was like, because men don't know how to harness their own energy. So the negativity is always going to be embraced in the most negative <clears throat> situations, and the money and the girls are the easiest thing to motivate niggas to make fucked up decisions. So that makes you know that <laughs> the power of money and the power of a woman is equal. And I would say women is more powerful than money because if you yeah. ain't got a dime and a woman walk in, you're gonna feel like, I got to get some money. Some money gonna make, gonna make you feel like, you know, you can get a woman, but a woman gonna make you feel like you need to get some money. So I just think that, you know, women got to understand that they had that power and we got a responsibility as men to feed that energy and be better towards them. But at the end of the day, ladies, you got a responsibility to know that motherfucker, y'all really run shit. For huh, real. A, woman. a woman. Accountability. Yeah. Responsibility. Yeah, man, good, good, good. Oh. <laughs> yeah, nah, you're right, though. man. Yeah. You want to right. unlearn all the shit that you know? Unlearn. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, though. And I think I, I do, I speak. Uh, we got this thing called Women's Only, and it's three married men. And they be letting around. you in there? Yeah. <laughs> right, that is, bro, that's, bro. But it's married men yeah. talking to, to single women. To y'all fucking the game up. Stop oh, that right. shit, man. Yeah. Don't nobody yeah, want y'all fucking advice? Yes, they no do. No, the fuck they do. Y'all married. Y'all the ones fucking the game up. We need that shit, kid. Y'all yeah, what advice? Y'all right single. Y'all telling these ladies, me. Y'all all this old. Extravagant ass like, shit. You can have a hundred million dollars. No, the fuck no, you can't. No, no. Kenny Burns got that shit. No, no, and he no. having these meetings at the Ramada Inn telling all the bad women, stop giving away your pussy. Work on your business. Get your mind together. Focus on yourself. Man, shut that shit up. You been your wife beautiful in a motherfucker, man. Don't be out here putting all that bullshit no, in the game. No, I'm saying this nigga. Hey, make sure you get my book. Man, fuck all that bullshit. No, man. Well, I, I think, I think. You know the nigga fucking nigga. It's, it's married me. It's me and my wife giving single women advice. For fucking what? <laughs> For what? <laughs> Y'all are together. Leave us the fuck alone. We'll figure it out. You need to know what y'all did in the second year of marriage when shit got rough. Who gives a shit? Y'all are fucking oh, again. Hey, my Me, face my homeboy, baby face. Man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Jay stopped doing with the last one. He brought the Honda out. Story, Believe it or not. The story is too man, extravagant. Ain't Marie oh, sings God. the intro. Get oh, the fuck. Come God. on, man. Why the crazy. hell are you out here giving single women advice? Look, if I was trying to fuck you, this is what I'd do. Get out of here, kid. Ah, no, 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 no. Ah, no, 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 This is why I would never get married. I can't see myself getting married because just him making that statement, that nigga kidding me. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait. wait, 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 wait. wait. We're not that. putting that out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ain't said nothing yeah, like that. Said nothing Come like that. Like well, that. I got me a similar. Now listen, I'm trying to take like the single women that really respect what we got going on. <laughs> Why are you talking to single women, Kenny? What are you doing? I, listen, what are you I, doing? I think that there's a disconnect. <laughs> you can't connect it. You I, are I have. disconnected. I have. You it already. Okay, Superman. Your wife gives you too much confidence, bro. <laughs> <laughs> 
Bro, what if you can't connect it? It's been disconnected. Who the fuck said? Hold on, let me let me connect this for y'all. Oh you shit. Get the he point. already connected. Uh, yeah, if you don't fall the fuck back and let us figure this out. Hey, I'm crew. trying to have your back. I'm uh-huh. trying to give them information. Stop. That makes it's it easier for Whatever you. Whatever you saying, they're, they're not listening. The opposite. They're hearing the opposite. All I right. get that. All right. I mean, being out here, like I said, we were just talking about that. Like, with <laughs> you, you have <laughs> an, ex- and you an extraordinary nigga. You Smoke. have done extraordinary shit. No, okay. So you are sending yeah. these, a lot of these women out into the world with, with the extraordinary shit. nigga energy. And they well, come that, in. Well, that no. If you go on the Kenny Barnes seminar, he ain't gonna be there. I, I'm gonna take his spot. There you go. So, they need to let us come. They need That's what. Bring it up. Are you in the same up. boat as me? Yeah, I am, but I ain't married. Oh, okay. Right. You let me come. Let me come talk. <laughs> let me, after you say whatever, now we're gonna have a debate. That's gonna be on me and Lowe. Me and Lowe oh, need to come talk. my seminar in a dream. What kind of extreme sport is this? You and your wife go in a room full of fine ass women. Baby, I ain't gonna look at no My wife don't go. What in the what the what the what the what the fuck what what? My wife don't go. What? Nigga been there playing Uno sitting down. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, you let's talk about feelings today. You want to discuss? They coming in. Boom. Hey, 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 we just been friendly. We just playing Uno. All right, now skip you. I skip you. No, you can't do that. We got the door open in the hallway. <laughs> they got the baby speaker set up in that motherfucker. They can hear everything, man. We got. The Mom, I thought you said they was in there sending baby seats. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Y'all wild shit. Uh, oh, but, up, no, but, but, but what 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 is the the the, the grand what scheme? Doing? Of, of I was just playing. I can't go to the seminar. And it's, like and it's Burns. called right. for women only. I can't well, go to the seminar. I'm just like Kenny. Fuck it. All right. <laughs> this Blue episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. My name is Carlos Miller. Blue Chew. Dot com. Trust me. At this point, you already know. It's people asking me, man, what that Blue Chew do? Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. And it's a sexual stimulant. Now it's not it's not gonna cure any ailments or anything like that. But it will have you making sweet, sweet love <laughs> to your lady. Blue If you can benefit from more confidence where it counts. Blue Chew is the fastest and easiest way to enhance your performance. These pills are amazing. Go check them out at BlueChew.com. If you could use a confidence boost or you just want to feel like your old self again, trust your mans. Use the promo code. It's only $5, man. You can try it for $5. Go online. BlueChew.com. You can go right on your phone. That's Blue. B-L-U-E. Chew, C-H-E-W, dot com. Hey, man, make sure you hit that website and use their promo code. I just want you to see what all the hype is about. You get what I'm saying? Trust me on this. Use the promo code. Get your first shipment for free. 85 South. I put that on everything. Times is hard out here. You feel me? <laughs> for women only, like, so what What does that accomplish for the women? And you... It, in your opinion, at least. From well, I, I think there's a disconnect where women feel like they have to be, quote unquote, as free as men. Like this generation of women are unapologetic for the things they do, which they rightfully should be. But at the same time, I think there's a certain disconnect where they don't realize the men are judging them for said actions in a lot of ways, right? So it becomes this whole melting pot discussion of, well, why, why can't I do what I want to do? And what, you know, and so there's, there's a whole bunch of topics mm-hmm. that come into play because I, you know, and, and for me, I want everybody to do what they want to do in life. I just want you to be thoughtful about the consequences and what happens. You know, right. it's like you can go on Instagram and be this whole other person. You got fans only, but then you want a respectable man. You know what I'm saying? Right, I you know, showed you. that pussy for two dollars and ninety nine cent but, but to I'm a serious, nigga though. in goddamn Connecticut. Right, but I'm serious. But bitch, you I, want but, me to get this? But but I'm saying, and a lot of people live up. like that. A lot of people make money. A lot of women make money like that. You know I, a lot of, and I ain't knocking nobody who got an own. I ain't, I ain't knocking nobody that hustle, but you got to be prepared for the consequence, and you wonder why certain things right. are happening. Well, that all goes into right. what you want, because I don't know why a woman who has an OnlyFans will want a respectable man. What the fuck do you want a respectable that, man but, for? But see, but that's get what, you a nigga that don't they don't give a fuck about shit like that. But and then that, they, if they don't get happy. If they don't care about nothing, they don't care about 
too, ultimately. If they don't care about nothing. See, this right. is the bullshit I'm talking Talk about. Talk your shit. No, no, I mean, no, you, no, no, but I'm just the saying. shit I'm talking but, about, Kenny. No, but I'm just saying, look, you can have relationships. It's plenty of dumb motherfuckers in the world. Exactly. Yeah. You go have they need to be with them. Pointless relations they... with whoever. But I'm trying to say the women that say they want a relationship, this ain't, got, this ain't got nothing to do with the women that don't care and the niggas that don't care. We talking about the women that want to be in a relationship. If you want to be in a relationship, there's things you have to do to be in a relationship, just like men. There's certain things we have to do to be in a relationship. Fuck a relationship. Okay. Man. All right. I mean, I mean, me. Me, not kidding. I but, this, but this is my thing. This is my thing. This is my whole yeah, deal, bro. This my, this my whole, my we're, bad OG. We're, that's fine. We're ready this, to transition. <laughs> this my whole deal about it, right? A marriage is a uh, uh, contract. No, 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 no. It's that, a contract, ain't it? It is. It is. It's a Bro, commitment. Have, it's, it's, it's a contract. It's a contract. You need to do with your girl. Now, hey, wait, 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 wait. She get everything. Wait, wait, we got bigger issues. They is married men out here giving single women advice. Uncle Nearest, the fastest growing <laughs> single. Listen, I agree. Uh, <laughs> to disagree. To disagree. Uh, but we gonna go ahead and get into this. Man, we trying to get it in the liquor game. Too. We are, because we got, we got Carlos Bernard. Hey, you I don't sure? know if let me tell you something. I think they should give child support to whoever the baby look like the most. <laughs> <laughs> if the baby look like the daddy, hey, bitch, I wish you wouldn't put me on child support. That baby look just like me. You know I'm gonna run that check up on your ass. Don't do it. Say, Forget why we up. Up. Why we give another boy? And he got my birthmark? <laughs> bitch, that's an extra 2000 I also think in America, if you decide to get married, if you decide to get divorced, you should be able to get, you should have to get divorced the same way you get married. So the same way you made me sit and listen to y'all talk all that shit about how y'all were going to be together forever, I should get to come to the courtroom and hear y'all talk about all the shit that made y'all break the fuck That's up. Private. That's private. That's <laughs> ain't private. no private. No. If I got to come hear Brian McKnight sing and see y'all cry and your <laughs> daughter And you and get shit. to pick what side you sit yeah, on. Exactly. Whoever you agree right. with. Fuck with, you get to sit. The divorce need to be the same way as marriage. So if you, whoever you get an invitation to your wedding, like get an invitation to your divorce. So whenever y'all go to that court hearing, I get to be in that bitch just like I was at the wedding. Listening to everything. Everything. Yo, she the, did what? Yo, oh, she oh. sucked them balls, y'all. <laughs> oh. listen, listen to the voice, man. He let me. She sucked my digger line. <laughs> and then she come with, well, nigga, if your balls ain't smell like motherfucking outside, maybe you could have got <laughs> your suck. I'm going to go sit on my cousin's side. Yeah. Right, nigga, that's what it is. But enough of that. Enough of that. Some more of this. I did, I did not know we were going down the rabbit hole. I did. <laughs> I was my trying bad, to add. You started this. I was trying to add. You started this, this with the three women on the seminar. Got to the I was trying you to are make. exposed. We started the YouTube page about that shit. You know that? We, that shit has to end. Now. Oh, my God. That was the weed. That shit has to end. Yeah, this, this right here is 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 amazing, man. Like like I said, I'm. I'm a uh, Kenny Burns. Let me get some of that shit, man. Y'all niggas like bullshit. Oh, no, yours right there. Yours, he grabbed yours. That's the one he bought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, me right here. But like I said, you are uh, one of my biggest motivations and somebody that I look up to grandly. But when we was outside earlier, you said some shit that fucked me up because all of the things that I know you have done throughout your career and all of the dope shit that you've accomplished, you said that this is the best shit that you've ever done. No question. And, this is your reparations, you said. Yes. So <laughs> he said, like "Now motherfucker." Said, though. Now you said that this is a I, I want to do some alcohol. That's why even when we came up with Carlo Bernard, that yeah, hit alcohol, alcohol too. Bernard, yeah. That shit. That shit but but why, that shit why, why is is this the the you why know, the coup de gras? Why why this? Yeah. So it so there's a lot of variables, right? So when I actually was doing all the influ influencer programs, creating all these events and brands within brands. Right. You want that? Yeah, go. Drop, 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 drop. I realized that I never owned anything in, in the business, right? All the things I would put my money up for that I was actually passionate about, whether it was parties to promote concert tours, whatever I would do, I had never garnered the success that I have just in the short three years this brand has been, you know, around. And when, I, when it happened, I had launched Revolt Television with Puff in 2013. And I moved to LA. Shout out to the Revolt. They fucked with us. Yeah, salute, 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 salute to Puff, Puff too. man. P Diddy. Shout out to Puff, man. Sean salute Cole. To P Diddy. Yeah. So we uh, went out there. We moved to LA. But when I moved out there in my contract, I had that once the senior level executive package was defined, I would get my piece, right? Because it wasn't defined yet. That's the trickery, right? So I get into the contract. And then midway through, Sean's like, yo, come over to Sean, uh, Sean uh, Combs Wine Experience and help us out with Ciroc 
and we got this tequila we want to launch. So Apple Ciroc was my launch. I launched Deleon Tequila. Now, mind you, I'm still on this contract, though. He doubled my salary, but I'm still on this contract because I want some ownership. Now, that was all I wanted to do. Like, I, at this point in my career, that's the only thing I hadn't achieved. Right, right. And when right. you don't own something, you don't get residuals. When you don't own something, you can't go, you know, leverage something against nothing. So this right. was my thing. And so when it didn't happen, I was like, all right, I'm going back. And he paid me out handsomely to leave. I give him that. But when I got back to Atlanta, literally, I was like, damn, like, square one. Now, mind you, I'm 40-something years old, and I'm talking about square one, not square one as not well, having no paper. Say, that's scary <clears> than a motherfucker. Yeah, but not having no paper, <laughs> but square one is like I'm adapting and adjusting again. Anytime right. you pivot in business, you subject to lose it all. Right. Please know that. Right. Anytime you putting your own money up for things, anytime right. you putting your all into something, you subject to lose. But you got to be willing to lose. Because if you're risk. willing to lose, you're willing to gain. Right. And two months later, literally, after I moved back, a guy I played golf with one time in my life, I don't play golf. Right. I do not play golf. Right. My partner was like, I knew he, he was getting a, a bag. I wanted to be around another bag, another level of bag. He was 40 million up. I wanted to be around the billionaire dudes. The dudes had had the billion. They was VCs. So I'm like, let me go. It's Trump Golf Course. Actually, this is way before Trump in office. This is way before Trump in Nigga office. Nigga got a golf course? God damn. Yeah. He got yeah. a bunch yeah. of golf So course. I'm drinking. I'm on the, on the buggy all day. I ain't swing at eight. I swung just for play play. I wasn't even into it. Fucking round. Dude remembers me from that day. One time meeting me. And when he he was, he was did the Series A uh, raise for Uncle Nearest, he had reached out and was like, look, I know what you do in the spirits business. You know, we want you to come and do something with this, but you got to meet the lady Fawn Weaver. And so Fawn Weaver, a sister, <coughs> married to Keith Weaver, yeah, a black woman. What's up, Miss Weaver? Yeah, married to Keith Weaver, flew down to uh, Lynchburg, and just where I was in my life, again, it was another pivot. Mm. And I'm, I'm hearing this information, to your point of saying uh, reparation, I'm hearing this information, right, like on what's going on. A slave taught Jack Daniels how to make whiskey. Right. And so I'm hearing this story, but not only am I hearing in DC, I'm on the holy the holy ground. I'm at ground zero. I'm where all this shit is happening. So she's taking me through the process. Now mind, let me see your bottle for a second. She takes me to the square. You know what I'm saying? She tells me about the racial tension and how this family, the Green family, was prominent in this place. And I'm mm -hmm. like, Lynchburg, Tennessee, how was they prominent? She's telling me these stories and I'm getting hip, I'm getting hip. Then she takes me to this farm. This house is on the farm called the Dan Call Farm. This is where a young Jack Daniels came as an orphan, and this is where Uncle Nears <coughs> was the best whiskey maker in the county, right? Mm -hmm. So whole time I'm on this land, she take me, I'm drinking water out the creek and shit, I'm doing just shit I ain't never done, you know right. what I'm saying? Because the limestone purifies the water, they got this whole thing, that's why um, it's one of the magic sauces, uh, or secret sauces to Tennessee whiskey. But long story short, I'm going through the whole process, and I'm getting more and more information. So I'm like, look, I'm, I want in. You know what I'm saying? I want 20% of the company. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking, because I'm coming in like, I can take this to a story. Right. I done blew up shit with less story. You be like, I, I be giving advice to single women and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm like, I want 20% of the company. be believing me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She's a beast. I can't give you 20% of the company, but we can work on something because I love your energy and I think you can help the brand. So long story short, I leave. We get in the business about a month later. Come to find out later on that not only was this the, not only did she own this property, she bought 300 acres. Dan Call is a prominent figure in the story of Jack Daniel. Jack Daniel does not own the Dan Call farm. We own the Dan Call farm, uh, Dan Call farm, and this is the house on it. But not only did I not know that this was a prominent piece, and she had started, uh, like Monopoly Boy, she started getting pieces of the Tally House, which is another prominent figure in Jack Daniels. She owned that property. They live in that property. Hey, Kenny, she, buy all that shit. Yeah, no, no, but, but, but listen, I'm going to fuck black, you up. But she black, no. She black. She's yeah, a superhero. Buy all that shit, bro. But I'm going to fuck you up even more. This house, the Dan Carl Farm, is actually distillery number seven. Mm. Old mm. number seven mm. is Jack Daniels' moniker. Right, on the bottom. We own mm -hmm. distillery number seven, and she uncovered God damn. She uncovered it. <laughs> Paul Weaver uncovered the shit, right? So I'm a part of all this fucking history, and that's why I was saying to him outside is the best thing I've ever been a part of because you think it's going to be your legacy. Your I, mean, I, made, I made millions of dollars, but 
your legacy is tied to somebody else's legacy in a way that you wouldn't have got on your right. own. That was my point about Dream. It's cool. Yeah, I'm still the Kenny Burns show about to be the biggest shit after the corona. All that. But at the same time, you know, I have I have my dream. This right. is my dream. I want to own the shit. I want to be a part of history. This will be my my face will be in the distillery a hundred million years from now, God willing that everything's still intact, to show people that I was at the beginning of this. And that's, you know. That's that's fucking history. Hell no, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a beautiful thing. thing. I know I know it's some thing. some Jack that's Daniels. Why I gotta holler it's at you an about old the, white about man. Nah, it's an old real. white man just found that out like I'll be a son of a bitch. <laughs> you gonna <laughs> tell me about <laughs> that? Nigger that owns Jack Daniels farm! <laughs> First <laughs> match <laughs> car now this shit! <laughs> yeah. God damn it! What you gonna tell me next? <laughs> the Michael on. Jordan owns Harley Davidson? <laughs> Hold on, and the reason why I want y'all to be in the spirits business, I'm about to fuck you all the way up. Come on then! Casa Amigos was owned by George Clooney and uh, Peter Gerber. I think it's Peter Gerber. Peter, Peter Gerber, fun fact that for me, but I think it's Peter Gerber. He's a, whole, a hospitality guy. They, uh, in four years, were a 79,000 case brand. No distillery, no nothing. They sold for a billion dollars. Well, look, we got no, some shit. No, Boy, no, we got some no, shit. We already I made it I, I ain't fuck you up yet. Y'all niggas getting fucked up. I ain't fuck you up yet. We've been sold 79,000 cases. We in our third year. And I'm just saying, we have a, and we have a distillery that is, it will rival any distillery in, in the business, let alone whiskey. And so what I'm saying to y'all is, y'all got to also, now that y'all got this platform, now that y'all had an opportunity where people are actually buying what you're selling, you got to create the products, man. Give it to them. They're going to buy it. But we'll be we're at old be. number seven. Yeah, for real. I, and I want to take y'all up there. I want to take y'all on the Nigga, tour. Nigga, we going. We got to yeah, go. I, I, got, I got to go hug this black woman. Well, for I real. I just want to hug her. For Walk real. around on the plantation. And mind you, all these off. motherfuckers I made money for, all these people I've been in business with, come on in here with the fun fact. You going to read that? Yeah, Randy Gerber. That's what I said. Yep, George you said Peter. Randy Gerber. Huh? You said Peter. Oh. Oh, I said Peter. So Randy Gerber. Thank you, love. But yeah, they got, but I'm gonna fuck you up though. What was I saying? I don't know. The, uh, now, all the people you've been in business with. 79,000 cases, three years. All the people I've been in business with, all the motherfuckers I made money for, all the people that seen my light when I ain't see it for myself, right. it took a complete stranger to offer me equity and something. Right. And y'all gotta Shit realize, crazy. y'all gotta realize, Shit the crazy. people y'all think gonna do it ain't gonna be the people that's gonna do it. It's gonna be the motherfucker come out the woodwork because they see you that's for an who angel. you really are. No, that's an no, angel. no, I tell her all the time. That's my an angel. Animal. That's an angel. I tell her all the time. Believe. But you know what? I always tell. I always pray for this. You know what I'm saying? Um, I ask God to guide my footsteps. And and every time I place my feet somewhere, I always try to find my purpose on wherever uh-huh. I'm at. You dig what I'm saying? So by me listening to your story, I'm like, this nigga in the woods. On acres with some black lady teaching, telling him, I hope he in there like, <clears throat> God, I, um, you got this lady in front of me for a reason. Right, right, it's my time. duty to embrace all this right now. But that's why I know you special, because to say like you, when you plant your feet, you become aware. Like, right. A lot of us aren't aware in any moment, let alone to stop immediately. I do that every time I show up. Right. Before I touch a microphone, before I speak to I got to, to see people. what's going on. You got, but you also got to be thankful for the moment. Because when too. you can be thankful walking into the moment, you're going to receive, you're open to receive everything there. And that's why I be trying people like, to tell people, it's like, y'all be going in this shit with premeditated notions of what you think supposed to happen. No, be open to receive. See, the gift is the ability to receive and then regurgitate see that's well, exactly what we do that defines but exactly that's why i'm what giving y'all y'all yeah, props that's exactly. why i'm even and you're y'all are older than him but that's why like for him to even be 28 to see that you know what i'm saying like y'all together is beautiful because one is showing black men that we could do things together and that's the most important thing y'all could teach a motherfucker like <clears> real talk but to to walk in your purpose that's anointment that's like all this pulpit shit that going on people just want to get in for the likes or the conversation so real shit can happen with this for y'all because right. of the genuine and authentic nature that you're presenting. That's all I want to tell y'all. Yeah, and I respect it. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Shit, nigga, we respect you. this for shit. For real. Nigga, like, this about? is just amazing. I, want, I got to go here. And yeah. then we got, we got, we came up with the Carlos Bernard. We was talking about uh, our, our yeah, middle that's names. Yeah, that's the next one. And uh, yeah. Carlos' middle name is Bernard. He said that sound like a cheap liquor. But the reality is, nigga, that shit do sound like some shit a motherfucker get right on some Carlos Bernard. No, listen, Bernard. Don't, don't, don't dumb it. Listen, it is what it is. I wish I would listen to Damon Dash when he told me to take them button-ups. 
from $300, $400 down to $69.99. This before Walters got a hold of them. This before everybody was selling right. button up. Right. Walters was selling button up. This is how popular we had this shit. My thing is, dog, I should have listened because it's about the motherfucking revenue. It's not about your personal preference. If you mm. know you got a brand and this is who you speaking to, right. and they going to go I know do, my people. Yeah, I know right. my pe- they not no. buying that. Nigga that's too 1999 is perfect. Them niggas, I know them niggas. My next offering going to be $20. Watch what I tell you. This $60 a bottle, but my next offering will be $20 and and I'm the fly I think I'm one of the fly motherfuckers, especially to be my age still in the game. But I promise you, I hear y'all. Y'all don't dumb down. Y'all should give it to them how they want it. Yeah, that's we know yeah. how they want it. You know what I'm saying? Want. We spoke to yeah, them. We, yeah. we, we, we know, know exactly how they want it. How they want it. We yeah. ain't gonna talk all the dynamics right now, but we'll get it. We're gonna yeah, rep. Pop, however man, I can help. I ain't gonna lie. Shit, you pop. know how. You know how. Yeah. You know exactly how. You got to stop them seminars though, real talk. Yeah. <laughs> No, nah, what I need to do is bring you Negro so you can Bruh, see that don't, bag. Don't let this yeah, be like I'm, be, I'm, be I'm not opposed to that. I already offered myself like, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I offered come myself up to come. Let, come me, let me find out where the location oh, is. I'm going to be here, outside Pick it. You got Stop this madness. Stop this. Kenny Burns must be stopped. Put the propaganda post on. You see this face? You can't trust it. Nah, can you have your man, because they mogul status. You feel what I'm saying? Like. Don't let for this you, be the last time you come through here. Please. No, man. I love it, man. For, for you it. to say that, you like now, you like finally seeing like your purpose. You done helped everybody out in the game. You done damn near stamp. You done architect of this shit. You feel me? But for you to be like, all right, now I'm satisfied. You know what I'm saying? And I can yeah. still, you know what I'm saying, implement everything that I learned into the actual product and yeah. brand that you want. You feel yeah. what I'm and saying? And this is another gangster thing. I ain't put one dollar up for my shares. Not one dollar. See, we should have stopped you before you said that. My that likeness is. and who I am in culture got me my equity. So that's in that, that brand. brand. That's full circle. And, so. I, and I want y'all to know that it's like y'all matter like that. And when you go talk to these folks, you got to put the weight of everything you've done and who mm-hmm. you are on the table. I'm even guilty of like shorting, you know, shorting myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I am guilty of it too. Stop doing that. I'm not going to do it anymore. <laughs> But, That's what we're but, here for. We're here to uplift brothers, man. 100%. Stop doing that. And, I'm, and, I, and I promise I'm not. But at the same time, you have to know what it feels like to know your worth. You cannot come in nowhere thinking it's automatic because I did something. Right, right. right, right. What they say, you, you, your best thing you did was the thing you just did. It ain't, right. it ain't what you. What have you done for you me lately? Saying? So I think we just, for, for us as, a, as, as people. We got to know our value. We got to know our value and we got to get, we got to get what we came for. We, we often go in and take what they give us. You Ooh. know what I'm saying? I was telling him outside. Shit. I, I got offers out the woodwork for TKBS and like linear radio, I mean terrestrial radio. Like I'm, I'm wondering like, do I even want to do that anymore? Like yeah. I don't really need nobody. All my, everybody you've seen coming to Kenny Burns show from the politicians, to Kevin Hart, whoever, they all been my partner. I've had 50, I've actually my 50th episode next week. Like I you got resources. You know why what I'm saying? Should I, why but should but I everybody go does. Like this, this shit ain't six degrees no more. Right. Like it was for us it's, growing it's, it's up. It's time to use your resources. Yeah. Bro. It's time. It's easy to tap it's, in. It's easy now. Bro, you, you remember talking, we you, just talking about nigga, this Nigga, didn't I just, uh, we just did that Didn't I just say, didn't I, what? Who? Yeah, hey, shit, you did. Shit. Shit. Uh, I we heard know, you. We know too you many, did. We know too many motherfuckers Real, to be asking niggas for no more. I you said this shit. We don't what was I just saying outside? Yeah, that's exactly what We know said. too many you motherfuckers I mean? to be asking niggas for an opportunity. Right. When we can put money up and create a fund, that's how a fund start. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? And then we go on from there, man. Because at the end of the day, I'm tired of asking these fuck niggas what they got for me when they really need me to help the company. Come on. Yeah, you know I mean, straight up. Straight up. And there's a bunch of niggas that don't it. look. There's a bunch of niggas that don't know culture, running culture, and you gotta stop that. Right. After that's, this, after this, they got control of like our culture. No, for sure. Let it go. That's Let it a go. fact. <laughs> That's a fact. But guess what? After this, everything going to be different. Let it go. After this, everything going to be different. The way I, people I consume. Hope so, but, but, you no, know, but, but you know what we got to do? We got to continue to say, hey, y'all, continue to have that corona mindset. Just because if you back open the free and they start giving out stimulus check, don't be trapped. Remember. It ain't going to never be like that. We ain't got corona to worry about mindset. that. If the black people would just going. support their own, the world, we'll run the world. The world ain't the world ain't going to be. We were just saying that too, like the, how many times the black dollar don't bounce around our community. But the thing is, like a lot of people now, they don't have the ability to be able to see 
the profit in the shit that they've normally looked at Preach. for their whole life. But now that shit has changed and the world look different. Now at the same places that you've been, even if it's to a restaurant, when you go in, the, you can be going to the restaurant for the, your whole life. Now you go in there, they got X's on the table. Mm. Nothing is the same, even just the smallest visual aspect. Right. So everything changes. So now that everything has changed, I hope that black people realize that we've had this gold mine that we've been walking on for generations. And for some reason, niggas just ain't fucked around and did the right thing, but, but you, now we can't. But you know what, I, I just told my, my, little, my little people in the neighborhood the other day, I said, bro, you gotta understand, cause I had this mindset. When you in the hood, they done demoralize our mindset that we don't think outside of a little ass two, three streets that we grew up on. Cause they gave us the You they see what I'm saying? Like that's all I know. Adam Bear, Martin Luther King, crime and sports. Tell me. That's what they left but, us. But, but but that's what I'm saying. We got drug dealing, sports, and rappers. If we feel like we don't do the old three, we done failed in life. Right. When oh, my nigga, no, that ain't the that ain't the case. It's so much other shit and there's so many jobs out there and whatever that you good at and, and God gave you a talent at, you should use it. You see what I'm saying? Because like you say, every door gonna open up another door. You gotta trust Period. God to guide your footsteps and be like, all right, you don't, nigga, you have to get your bitch ass up off your ass and walk and use your feet because, <laughs> the, listen, it's not gonna come to you. You feel me? You got to go out there and be ready for the world, the, the, the lessons, the failures, the wins, the losses, all the pain, because that comes with the, the trials and tribulations just to reach a certain point to know that God is real. And second of all, you can do whatever you want to do if you put your Yo, mind son, niggas want to be successful right what? now, uh, <laughs> Word up. And but, that's but, the but, fuck but, that but, part. But, okay, okay. But look, look, though. That's, yeah, that's why Money don't that mean that you are successful. Come it doesn't. Not even come on. It does not. But, but, so, yeah. just because you think it's a dollar. Give me the motherfucker. Just because you think it's a dollar. You got it. That God, don't mean dang. that you are successful, my nigga. You dig what I'm saying? So every day that you are growing your mind state or whatever, first of all, I'm going to give you another word. Attainment. Play me some pamper. Attainment to atonement. That's attainment. What you get to. Some God people damn. just really be looking for success. They need to be worried about attainment. Hello? Continuing to be consistency to have those attainment because now you're being successful because you're walking in your purpose. Can I tell you the you only thing you're missing in your game? Talk to me. The only thing you're missing in your game what? is going in them ballrooms talking just like that. That's the only thing you're missing. And eat the crab legs when you get in there. Yeah. No, no, no. My no, last two meetings. See, this is what I. No, no. My, no, last, look, two I, meetings, I got, my last two meetings was like that. Okay, because but, but I got I can't, tired. I can't, I can't, of I can't let this go. I can't let this go. Please tell it to me. Because the problem with us is that business is business. Mm -hmm. We can be who we are. We can be free. We can smoke. We can do whatever we want to do. But business. It's been until we write in the check, until we got the money, we have to handle business. And that's all I, you ain't got to be in no suit. You ain't got to be in, you got to be able to go talk and connect with the person you trying to get something out of. Mm -hmm. That's life. Mm -hmm. so Certain I, words that get them. And, and you don't need nobody speaking for y'all. None of y'all. Y'all mm -hmm. all are brilliant. Like the way that y'all, first of all, timing is probably one, one of the most underrated skill sets in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. You are comedians. Your time is impeccable. You set the whole motherfucking show until you got to fucking for women only and you murdered it. <laughs> because you had, I'm not, but you had your, listen That's what I'm telling y'all. Right. I'm talking about right. all three of y'all are brilliant and timing is something you can't teach. Right. You can't teach a motherfucker when to say the right shit. How you think that's gonna transform a room full of money? They need a nigga who need to say the right shit. They need shit. a person they can count on that's trusted by the culture because they don't know culture. Stop. Let's stop the dumbing ourselves down. This ain't no, this ain't rocket science. And the thing about it is, y'all proving it. So y'all social generation that really benefiting from it, y'all proving it. But now you gotta take it off of Instagram mm -hmm. and put it on goddamn your shit. Mm -hmm. You gotta take it off. And, and this is what I'm trying to tell y'all, man. They can't fuck with y'all, man. Mm -hmm. But see, y'all out here that supporting for the last in the moment. Y'all gotta stay down. LaFace records don't exist because y'all ain't stay down. Motown records ain't exist because niggas want cancel Talk culture. Shit. Talk your but that's shit. What, we don't own shit. They don't Let them get one the legacy fuck. brand we own. Big shout to uh, Richie Lou Dennis for buying Essence back. Well, who the fuck, what we got from them days? We ain't got none of that shit. Carl Canada don't own shit. Nobody own nothing. Fun fact that, but I'm damn sure. But my point to y'all is, y'all can own y'all shit. The money is in ownership. Right. 
The money ain't in sharing money with these motherfuckers that don't know you. The only advantage they got is they got the capital to back you. Right. But y'all don't need to. I'm looking at 1,600 cameras in here, y'all. They got the cameras. They got the guitars and shit. <laughs> The shit is real, man. We got Come about four. We got about four. four. We got 16. We got about four. Goddamn, <laughs> Kenny. They gonna be over here trying to figure out what we at. Get a nigga out of it, bro. Goddamn, <laughs> Kenny. We ain't got nothing like four. You hear me? Yeah, yeah, we got that, enough to do the job. That's the excitement of just saying the shit. Yeah, we own them, bro. We own them. Yeah, we got shit. You know what I'm saying? One go to a little bit way. Oh, is that a red? Is that a red camera? No, no, no. That's 4K. No, that's Sony. Yeah, it's a Sony. Sony. Yeah, it's the one they recorded the Rodney King beat with, but we know how to rig the shit up That's real Sony. good over here. I, I feel exactly what you're saying. But y'all are Just like we was talking on the last joint. Right. right. You, like you said, we got everything we need to have everything we want. Right. Y'all yeah. got the power, man. And power and is purpose. Power is not like, you, please, man. Again, back to your, you, you got to know it's something spiritual out here guiding us, y'all. Right. You might not have to believe in God and church. I'm sorry, church. But you got to believe in God. Believe they better something. believe. Right. You better yeah. believe. I always tell a nigga, I, I, you, you better believe. Let me tell you something, man. God is real, man. You dig what I'm saying? I don't 100%. care what y'all got. Let me tell you something. God is real, and he'll come in any type of form. So that's why when I say, when you say you stepping into the room, and you got to, you got to brace yourself. Because first of all, you don't know who's the angel. Hello? You see what I'm saying? You don't know who is the angel. So you got to be paying attention to Everything that's moving, and when you and you'll know it by off, off, off the conversation, Hello? All right. and the energy is right. And like you said, it could be the janitor, man. They want to know what you doing talking to the janitor, man. What? But that energy right there, man. I had to have that conversation. You see what I'm saying? Because I know an angel. Man, I got out of my car, I was driving, right? I was driving. Nigga is in the middle of the lane. He painting. He on the car, but he homeless though. He painting. And I well, like I art. That. that was dope. Nigga, I pull up at two thirty in the morning. Nigga. <laughs> Boom, boom, get out. Hey, what's happening, OG, man? I like, I like the art spraying to me. He, you know, he talks fast. You know, he on it, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? But he gave me game, though. You see what I'm saying? Game that stuck with me that this is somebody who homeless. You feel what I'm saying? 2.30 in the morning. And I'm just sitting out there kicking shit because he ain't thinking nobody finna come out here and kick shit. So now he, he know this game and knowledge that he got, he can spread it on to somebody. It don't matter the, what your predicament is. Yeah. He got knowledge for a nigga. And I'm like, I'm not, and I paid him for whatever it was. But I'm just sitting there like, you know what, OG? Damn, we gotta do better. Just on you, it's, it's some way you went wrong, yeah, but I'm not gonna knock you for that. But guess what? I look at you as a as an example, because you know what? We got to keep succeeding. We got to keep scribing. And that game that you gave me, I'm gonna give it to somebody else That's too. Right. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, we you gotta understand that, all angels, bro. Yeah. Yeah. All, I don't knock nobody. Oh, you see what I'm saying? That's why know. we appreciate. Like that's why I gotta say, man. Just you know, big kudos and appreciation to you, man, for giving that game that you gave out in that documentary, man. Because I'm telling you, a big reason of why I'm sitting right here is because I stumbled upon that, and what you put down in that helped me understand that I, I always had it. It's like my favorite movie is The Last Dragon, and it's it's so sure much enough. it's uh, yeah it's so much game in that movie that people miss and and I you know salute Barry Gordy for putting it out because the glow it, it's already in you whatever your glow is you got it you just gotta realize what it is and you gotta come to understand what your glow is mm -hmm. and how to put it out and once you put it out can't nobody fuck with you and that was a pivotal point in me realizing my glow something that I didn't always had I didn't always been the fly ass nigga I didn't always been able to do all this shit that we in the community that I come from think it's cool, but I ain't never put my mind to really challenging my skill set and what I'm able to do. Challenge and when you. I saw that challenging myself, I always was trying to impress the, the status quo and make sure that the status quo fit whatever it is I was doing. But after I saw your journey and knowing you came from the same streets I came from, and it was like, I had never heard of you before then. That's another thing that motivated me. It was like, I'm 20 years old at that point, and I'm like, I ain't never even heard of this nigga. Like, who is this dude? And from that moment, I realized that, oh man, I got a responsibility to utilize what I got, because I've always been special, but I ain't never challenged myself. From that moment you on, was a big loser. Right, yeah. and from that moment <laughs> on, and even without me, that's real though, even without me challenging myself, I done always been extraordinary, even without challenging myself. So if I did, then what would I be able to accomplish? And here we sit, man. So yeah. I salute you, man. I Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. You know what I mean? And I, I want to say this to all the youngest too, man. Like, you, 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 you know, it's okay to not be on the front line. A lot of people can't handle 
the front line. I was never on the front line early. You know what I'm saying? I was always doing my thing, but my light wouldn't let me be behind everybody but for so long. Mm -hmm. But you got to be okay with that. You got to be able to embrace that and know that your purpose is going to deliver you to where you need to be. And I just want y'all to realize that, man, because this light, everybody can't handle it. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it brings the worst out of people. It, it puts you in compromising positions. Right. And everybody ain't mentally strong enough to handle it. And I, when I tell you, I've seen people commit suicide, got arrested dead. I've seen people become drug addicts, lose their whole sense of, like, they don't know they stink, fucked up teeth. I mean, I've seen the business, and this is the majority of the people. This is not, it's like a, a handful of motherfuckers really made it. You know what I'm saying? But I want y'all to be conscious of what you're getting into. Study, learn about the shit you want to get into, and don't come into this shit blind, man, because just like um, DC said, man, or um, both of y'all said, you play basketball, sport, that ain't the only shit you could do, man. I, the best idea wins. In anything I've ever seen, any business, genre of business, anything, the best idea wins. So. Niggas you know, good at everything, shit, man. man. Exactly. Black people are fucking yeah. talented at a lot of shit. And you don't even know you're good at some shit until you do it. Yeah, yeah. trial and error is the best way to learn. School to teach you something. Trial fail. and error fucking is the real losers. We, you out to play some pippin' on this we, guitar. When you, you really live in life, you get <clears> You know, Prince is my in father in my, in my mind. There you go. <laughs> you got to pick. I never meant to cause you any pain. Oh, you been on this list. Hey. I ain't even gonna lie, hey. I was finna brace hey, myself bro. for this bullshit. Yeah, right. I was like, I'm glad like, that this nigga had to put that in the documentary. I'd have been like, oh, this nigga fake. I ain't gonna lie to him, though. Yeah. I would be like, I ain't getting This nigga's trying to, this nigga finessing. That's how, that's how you I'm get them single out. ladies in there. I know you been going through some pain. <laughs> Boom. One note. <laughs> One note. Before you get married, it ain't the same. <laughs> So y'all really gonna play the doc after this, man? man I would man. be honored. Man. Yes, man. Oh, I want people to see it. How man. long is it? Thirty-five minutes. Thirty-five. Oh, cool. It's short. It ain't even long, bro. It's cool. Depending on how they edit, y'all edit right. Hey, drop, no, drop, drop some info right where these people can catch up on you. I know a lot. You probably made some new fans on here today. At Kenny Burns on everything. The Kenny Burns Show uh, on YouTube. I just started my YouTube page. Congrats on y'all success. Thank you. Thank you. I really admire, it, man. I was just telling Chico before y'all came, man. Like. Seeing y'all do it make me want to be on, like, be more active on. You know, I'm, I'm an OG OG. Like, right. I ain't really into, but, you know, it's social things. But the kids are tapped in, man. man. These motherfuckers, like, right. I had to understand, like, all right, even though I'm, sh you know what I'm saying, I be doing that stupid shit. I got to let you know I'm, I'm smart, No, too, you though. are, bro. Don't, don't and keep, get listen, that, don't and, don't, get and do it confused. unapologetically. Don't right. think, because that's that was my thing. I, I just told you, I, I'm finally accepting. I was telling Los before the show, I'm finally accepting my, I'm an OG. Like right. I'm at that age where I can share the game. I can push it in perspective. We need it though. No, but but the gangster shit is a lot of people don't want to do that. Right. A That's lot of bullshit. people don't want like they just don't want to let go. Because you know why? It ain't enough young nigga that said, "Hey OG, I want to hear. I want you to kick some of that pimping." You feel me? Like, that's why I say I'm one of them niggas that wanna hear that shit. Like, I wanna cause that motivate me. It's not no hang standpoint like, ah oh, man, you motherfucker that. No, nigga, exactly. Show me how you got it, cause nigga, I admire that. That's you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like if you got the blueprint already and I know you, you're a resource. And yes, I know. If you broke the code, you broke the code, you broke the code. If everybody here broke the code, that's 15 different blueprints. And nigga, I'm at the crib reading every last blueprint. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that only gonna help me in my mind stay. Yeah. That's dope, man. Keep going, y'all. I applaud y'all, man. I respect your movement. Hey, man. I'm here Hold up, Ken. Before you go, you got to do the famous. We done, we done started the last <laughs> show. You got to do the famous shoulder shrug. E, E, double step. E, E. Come on. E, 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 E. Oh! We in the Thursday game. Hey, man, we appreciate you coming to our trap house. We're welcome anytime. We're going to see what this Uncle Nair is hitting on. Hell yeah. World famous Kenny Burns. One more time, man. One more time. Tune in to the Kenny Burns Show. Love. Where my man Roy at, man? Shoot us up. Craig, shoot us up. Thank you. OG. Appreciate the words. I love. Appreciate the words. I love. Come on, man. We got no book, dude. Yeah, I got a book. For real. Yep, Dream is Real. Bruh, I'm about to actually sign the sheets about to let me read. Bruh, I need I need I need goddamn reason shit. I don't know my reason shit later. Nah, I ain't not even gonna say the book. Bruh, I need some reason. I don't like all your books. I don't like nothing that 
that no, handicapped me. Because I'm going to get having, used to that. You need to be able to know the words. Like, more words that I know, I realize when I'm reading, I can't even sign out the other words. I'm like, wait, I'm smarter than this shit. Bro, look, we got some new merch in. Man, come on, man. I'm getting this big ass jacket, man. That jacket <laughs> way too big. Bigger than a you know, we got all sides. Come on, but these are the ones I ordered, though. This is my oh, size. Oh, yeah. the perfect size, man. Where, where they can find them at? 85apparel.com. Mmm. Know what time it is? Get your, get your shit right now. <laughs> People been asking about these jerseys. The jerseys have been restocked. Uh -oh. Make sure you hit the website at 85apparel.com, man. We're giving you $25 off every order of a hundred dollars or more. And if you're looking for the sweaters, the sweaters are still up. Yep, custom fit, huh? We got them in all sizes, small, medium, large, extra large, bigger than them Come on. You know it. <laughs>